The Middle East Media Research Institute Memory is a non-profit press monitoring and analysis organization with headquarters in Washington, D.C. Memory publishes and distributes free English-language translations of Arabic, Persian, Urdu, Pashto, and Turkish media reports. Memory states that its goal is to bridge the language gap between the Middle East and the West. It has been praised as an invaluable resource and for helping to shine a spotlight on hate speech wherever it appears. Critics charge that despite portraying itself as neutral, it aims to portray the Arab and Muslim world in a negative light through the production and dissemination of incomplete translations and by selectively translating views of extremists while de-emphasizing or ignoring mainstream opinions. History The institute was co-founded in 1998 by Yigal Karman, a former Israeli military intelligence officer and mayor of Wormser, an Israeli-born American political scientist. <laughs> Objectives and projects The organization indirectly gained public prominence as a source of news and analysis about the Muslim world, following the September 11 attacks and the subsequent war on terrorism by the Bush administration. According to memory, its translations and reports are distributed to "...congresspersons, congressional staff, policy makers, journalists, academics, and interested parties." According to PRA, MEMRI's translated articles and its commentary are routinely cited in national media outlets in the United States, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, and Los Angeles Times, while analyses by memory staff and officers are frequently published by right-wing and neoconservative media outlets such as National Review, Fox News, Commentary, and The Weekly Standard. PRA writes that both critics and supporters of memory note its increasing influence in shaping perceptions of the Middle East. It has maintained long-standing relations with law enforcement agencies. Concerning this change in their mission statement, Political Research Associates (PRA), which studies the U.S. political right, notes that it occurred three weeks after the September 11 attacks and considers memory was previously more forthcoming about its political orientation in its self-description and in staff profiles on its website." PRA considers that, "...MEMRI's slogan, bridging the language gap between the Middle East and the West, does not convey the Institute's stridently pro-Israel and anti-Arab political bias." It further notes, that MEMRI's founders, Wormser and Karman, are both hardline pro Israel ideologues aligned with Israel's Likud party? Carmen, in a public letter to Juan Cole that included a threat with a lawsuit over his comments on memory, stated that he has never been affiliated with Likud. Cole answered that he hadn't alleged that, but that memory would campaign for Likud goals such as the rejection of the Oslo peace process. In 2012, Haaretz reported that Israeli intelligence agencies have reduced their monitoring the Palestinian media with memory and Palestinian Media Watch now providing the Israeli government with coverage of anti Israel incitement in social media, blogs, and other online sources. The Prime Minister's Bureau has stated that before the government cites information provided by the two sources, the source of the material and its credibility is confirmed. Projects MEMRI's work is organized into projects, each with a specific focus. The main subjects the organization addresses are jihad and terrorism, relations between the U.S. and Middle East, pro-democracy and pro-civil rights views, inter-Arab relations, and antisemitism. The Reform Project, according to memory, focuses on monitoring, translating, and amplifying media from Muslim figures and movements with progressive viewpoints in the Arab and Muslim world. The project also aims to provide a platform for those sources to expand their reach. Memory has stated that this is the organization's flagship project, the Memory Lantos Archives on Antisemitism and Holocaust Denial, a joint project with the Lantos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice launched in 2009, is a repository of translated Arabic and Farsi material on antisemitism. 
The project is sponsored by the U.S. State Department. Through its translations and research, the project aims to document anti-Semitic trends in the Middle East and South Asia. The project provides policymakers with translations and footage of anti-Semitic comments made by media personalities, academics, and government and religious leaders. Memory holds an annual Capitol Hill gathering through the project, and publishes an annual report on antisemitism and Holocaust denial. The archives were named for Tom Lantos, the only Holocaust survivor to serve in United States Congress. Arab and Iranian television programming is monitored, translated, and analyzed through the Memory TV Monitoring Project. Established in 2004, the project's translated video clips are available to the media and general public. Activity by terrorist and violent extremist organizations is tracked through the Jihad and Terrorism Threat Monitor. JTTM. The project disseminates jihadi-associated social media content and propaganda released by various Islamic State media companies. The organization's Cyber and Jihad Lab (CJL) tracks cyber terrorism. According to Memory, the CJL's goal is to inform and make recommendations to legislators and the business community about the threat of cyber terrorism. Initiatives have included encouraging social media companies to remove terrorist accounts and sought legislation to prevent terrorist entities from using their platforms. MEMRI's other projects include the Russian Media Studies Project, which translates Russian media and publishes reports analyzing Russian political ideology, the Iran Studies Project, the South Asia Studies Project, and the 9 11 Documentation Project. Languages According to its website, Memory provides translations and analysis of Arabic, Farsi, Dari, Urdu, Pashto, and Turkish media. It has recently added a Russian media translation project. Memory provides translations into an analysis in English, French, Polish, Japanese, Spanish, and Hebrew. Topic. Financial support Memory is registered in the U.S. with the IRS as a 501 nonprofit organization. They have a policy of not accepting money from governments, relying instead on around 250 private donors, including other organizations and foundations. Media Transparency, an organization that monitors the financial ties of conservative think tanks to conservative foundations in the United States, reported that for the years 1999 to 2004, Memory received $100,000 from the Lind and Harry Bradley Foundation, Inc., $100,000 from the Randolph Foundation and $5,000 from the John M. Olin Foundation. MEMRI's U.S. income statement of June 2004 stated that its total U.S. revenue was $2,571,899, its total U.S. functional expenses were $2,254,990, and that it possessed net assets of $700,784. Charity Navigator, an organization that evaluates the financial health of America's largest charities, has given memory a four-star rating, meaning that it exceeds industry standards and outperforms most charities in its cause. When rated on its financial health, in August 2011, the United States Department of State's Office of International Religious Freedom in the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, awarded Memory a $200,000 grant. Reception The organization's translations are regularly quoted by major international newspapers, and its work has generated strong criticism and praise. Critics have accused memory of producing inaccurate, unreliable translations with undue emphasis and selectivity in translating and disseminating the most extreme views from Arabic and Persian media, which portray the Arab and Muslim world in a negative light, while ignoring moderate views that are often found in the same media outlets. 
Other critics charge that while memory does sometimes translate pro-US or pro-democracy voices in the regional media, it systematically leaves out intelligent criticism of Western-style democracy, US and Israeli policy and secularism. MEMRI's work has been criticized on three grounds: that their work is biased, that they choose articles to translate selectively so as to give an unrepresentative view of the media they are reporting on, and that some of their translations are inaccurate. Memory has responded to the criticism, stating that their work is not biased, that they in fact choose representative articles from the Arab media that accurately reflect the opinions expressed, and that their translations are highly accurate. <laughs> Accusations of bias Brian Whitaker, the Middle East editor for The Guardian newspaper at the time, wrote in a public email debate with Carmen in 2003, that his problem with memory was that it "...poses as a research institute when it's basically a propaganda operation." Earlier, Whitaker had charged that MEMRI's role was to "...further the political agenda of Israel." And that MEMRI's website does not mention Carmen's employment for Israeli intelligence, or Mayor of Wormser's political stance, which he described as an extreme brand of Zionism. Carmen responded to this by stating that his employment history is not a secret and was not political, as he served under opposing administrations of the Israeli government and that perhaps the issue was that he was Israeli. If your complaint is that I am Israeli, then please say so. Carmen also questioned Whitaker's own biases, wondering if Whitaker's is biased in favor of Arabs, as his website on the Middle East is named Al-Bab, the Gateway, in Arabic, stating, I wonder how you would judge an editor whose website was called Ha Shah R. Quote opening parenthesis quote, the Gateway. In Hebrew, Norman Finkelstein has described memory as a main arm of Israeli propaganda. Quote dot. In 2006, Finkelstein accused Memory of editing a television interview he gave in Lebanon in order to falsely impute that he was a Holocaust denier. In an interview with the newspaper In Focus in 2007, he said Memory uses the same sort of propaganda techniques as the Nazis and take s things out of context in order to do personal and political harm to people they don't like. Topic. Selectivity Several critics have accused memory of selectivity. They state that memory consistently picks the most extreme views for translation and dissemination, which portray the Arab and Muslim world in a negative light, while ignoring moderate views that are often found in the same media outlets. Juan Cole, a professor of modern Middle East history at the University of Michigan, argues memory has a tendency to cleverly cherry-pick the vast Arabic press, which serves 300 million people, for the most extreme and objectionable articles and editorials. On more than one occasion I have seen, say, a bigoted Arabic article translated by memory and when I went to the source on the web, found that it was on the same op-ed page with other, moderate articles arguing for tolerance. These latter were not translated. Former head of the CIA's counterintelligence unit, Vincent Canestraro, said that memory are selective and act as propagandists for their political point of view, which is the extreme right of Likud. They simply don't present the whole picture. Layla Lalami, writing in The Nation, states that memory consistently picks the most violent, hateful rubbish it can find, translates it and distributes it in email newsletters to media and members of Congress in Washington." As a result, critics such as UK Labour politician Ken Livingstone state that MEMRI's analyses are distortion, a report by Center for American Progress, titled, Fear, Inc., The Roots of the Islamophobia Network in America. Lists memory as promoting Islamophobic propaganda in the USA through supplying selective translations that are relied upon by several organizations to make the case that Islam is inherently violent and promotes extremism. Memory argues that they are quoting the government controlled press and not obscure or extremist publications, a fact their critics acknowledge, according to Mark Perelman. 
When we quote Al Aram in Egypt, it is as if we were quoting the New York Times. We know there are people questioning our work, probably those who have difficulties seeing the truth. But no one can show anything wrong about our translations. In August 2013, the Islamic Dawa Center of South Australia questioned the reliability, independence, and veracity of the Middle East Media Research Institute after it posted what the center called a sensational decontextualized cut and paste video clip put together in a suggestive manner of a sermon by the Sheikh Sharif Hussein on an American website. According to the two-minute video, which was a heavily condensed version of the Sheikh's 36-minute speech delivered in Adelaide on the 22nd of March, Hussein called Australian and American soldiers crusader pigs", and stated, O oh Allah, count the Buddhists and the Hindus one by one. O oh Allah, count them and kill them to the very last one." According to MEMRI's translation, he also described U.S. President Barack Obama as an "...enemy of Allah, you who kiss the shoes and feet of the Jews," and predicted that, "...the day will come when you are trampled upon by the pure feet of the Muslims." MEMRI's rendition moved leading Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi to write to the police commissioner charging that under Australia's anti-terrorism laws, the video clip was, "...hate speech," and requesting that action be taken against Hussein. The South Australian Islamic Society and the Australian Buddhist Council's Federation also condemned Hussein's speech. Widespread calls from the public for the deportation of Hussein and his family followed news reports of the video. A police spokeswoman stated police will examine the entire content of the sermon to gain the full context and determine whether any crime has been committed. Hussein himself declined any comment on the contents of the video. However, the Dawa Center charged that by omitting the context of Hussein's statements, memory had distorted the actual intent of the speech. While admitting that the sheikh was emotional and used strong words, the center stated that the speech was delivered in relation to rape cases in Iraq, the birth defects due to use of depleted uranium and the Burmese Buddhist massacre. This, the center claimed, was omitted from the edited memory video. <laughs> Alleged translation inaccuracy MEMRI's translations are considered usually accurate, though occasionally disputed and highly selective in what it chooses to translate and in which context it puts things, as in the case of MEMRI's translation of a 2004 Osama bin Laden video, which memory defended, which it said indicated that any individual U.S. state that did not vote for President George W. Bush guarantees its own security implying a threat against those states that did vote for him, outside translators, and the original article that the memory alert claimed to correct, indicated that bin Laden was threatening nations, not individual U.S. states. Following the 7 July 2005 London bombings, Al Jazeera invited Hani al Sabay, an Islamist living in Britain, to take part in a discussion on the event. Al Sibai is listed as a specially designated national by the U.S. Treasury Department because of alleged support for Al Qaeda. For one segment of the discussion in regard to the victims, Memory provided the following translation of Al Sibai's words The term, civilians, does not exist in Islamic religious law. Dr. Karmi is sitting here, and I am sitting here, and I am familiar with religious law. There is no such term as civilians. In the modern Western sense, people are either at war or not. Al Sabay subsequently claimed that Memory had mistranslated his interview, and that among other errors, he had actually said, There is no term in Islamic jurisprudence called civilians. Dr. Karmi is here sitting with us, and he's very familiar with the jurisprudence. There are fighters and non fighters. Islam is against the killing of innocents. The innocent man cannot be killed according to Islam. By leaving out the condemnation of the killing of innocents entirely, Muhammad Loifi, writing in Le Monde Diplomatique, argued that this translation left the implication that civilians the innocent are considered a legitimate target. Several British newspapers subsequently used MEMRI's translation to run headlines such as 
Islamic radical has praised the suicide bomb attacks on the capital, prompting al Sabay to demand an apology and take legal action. In his view, MEMRI's translation was also, an incitement to have me arrested by the British authorities. Halim Barakat described memory as, a propaganda organization dedicated to representing Arabs and Muslims as anti Semites. Barakat claims an essay he wrote for the Al Hayat Daily of London titled, The Wild Beast That Zionism Created Self Destruction, was mistranslated by memory and retitled as, Jews Have Lost Their Humanity. Barakat further stated, Every time I wrote Zionism, memory replaced the word by Jew or Judaism. They want to give the impression that I'm not criticizing Israeli policy, but that what I'm saying is anti Semitic. Quote, According to Barakat, he was subject to widespread condemnation from faculty and his office was flooded with hate mail. Quote dot. Fellow Georgetown faculty member Aviel Rochewald accused Barakat in an article he published of promoting a demonization of Israel and of Jews. Supported by Georgetown colleagues, Barakat denied the claim, which Rochewald had based on MEMRI's translation of Barakat's essay. In 2007, CNN correspondent Atika Schubert and Arabic translators accused memory of mistranslating portions of a Palestinian children's television program. Media watchdog Memory translates one caller as saying, quote, We will annihilate the Jews, said Schubert. Quote, but, according to several Arabic speakers used by CNN, the caller actually says, the Jews are killing us. CNN's Glenn Beck later invited Yigal Karman onto his program to comment on the alleged mistranslation. Karman criticized the CNN's translator's understanding of Arabic, stating, even someone who doesn't know Arabic would listen to the tape and would hear the word Jews is at the end, and also it means it is something to be done to the Jews, not by the Jews and she Octavia insisted, no the word is in the beginning. I said, Octavia, you just don't get it. It is at the end." Carmen was referring to Arabic native speaker Octavia Nasser, a Greek Orthodox Christian from Lebanon, who was later fired by CNN for a tweet praising late Ayatollah Hussein Fadlala. Brian Whitaker, a Middle East editor for the British Guardian newspaper later pointed out that the word order in Arabic is not the same as in English. The verb comes first and so a sentence in Arabic which literally says are shooting at us the Jews means the Jews are shooting at us. Naomi Sacher, a professor of media policy at the University of Westminster has charged that specific memory mistranslations, occurring during times of international tension, have generated hostility towards Arab journalists. Brian Whitaker wrote in a blog for The Guardian newspaper that in the translation of the video, showing Farfour eliciting political comments from a young girl named Sanibel, the memory transcript misrepresents the segment. Farfour asks Sanibel what she will do and, after a pause says, I'll shoot. Memory attributed the phrase said by Farfour, I'll shoot, as the girl's reply while ignoring her actual reply of, I'm going to draw a picture. Whitaker and others commented that a statement uttered by the same child, we're going to, or want to, resist, had been given an unduly aggressive interpretation by memory as, we want to fight. Also, where memory translated the girl as saying the highly controversial remark, We will annihilate the Jews. Whitaker and others, including Arabic speakers used by CNN, insist that, based on careful listening to the low quality video clip, the girl is saying, Batakuna al Yahud, variously interpreted as, The Jews will shoot us, or, The Jews are killing us. Memory stands by their translation of the show, saying, Yes, we stand by the translation by the very words, by the context, by the syntax, and every measure of the translation." In response to accusations of inaccuracies and distortion, Yigal Karman, said, As an institute of research, we want memory to present translations to people who wish to be informed on the ideas circulating in the Middle East. We aim to reflect reality. If knowledge of this reality should benefit one side or another, then so be it. 
In an email debate with Carmen, Whitaker asked about MEMRI's November 2000 translation of an interview given by the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem to al Aram al Arabi. One question asked by the interviewer was, How do you deal with the Jews who are besieging al Aqsa and are scattered around it? which was translated as, How do you feel about the Jews? Memory cut out the first part of the reply and combined it with the answer to the next question, which, Whitaker claimed, made, Arabs look more anti-Semitic than they are. Carmen admitted this was an error in translation but defended combining the two replies, as both questions referred to the same subject. Carmen rejected other claims of distortion by Whitaker, saying, It is perhaps reassuring that you had to go back so far to find a mistake. You accused us of distortion by omission but when asked to provide examples of trends and views we have missed, you have failed to answer." Carmen also accused Whitaker of "...using insults rather than evidence." In his criticism of memory, Whitaker claims that although memory's translations are usually accurate, they are selective and often out of context. He stated, when errors do occur, it's difficult to attribute them to incompetence or accidental lapses. There appears to be a political motive. Topic. Response by memory Memory responds to criticism by saying that the media had a tendency to whitewash statements of Arab leaders, and regularly defends its translations as being representative of actual ME viewpoints, even when the translations themselves are disputed. Memory has never claimed to represent the view of the Arabic media, but rather to reflect, through our translations, general trends which are widespread and topical. Topic. Praise for memory John Lloyd has defended memory in The New Statesman. One beneficial side effect of the focus on the Middle East is that we now have available much more information on the discourse of the Arab world. The most powerful medium for this is naturally a Washington-based think tank, the Middle East Media Research Institute Memory, started in 1998 by the former Israeli intelligence officer and Arabist Yigal Karman. Memory aimed to bring the previously largely enclosed and unknown Arab talk about the West to Western eyes and ears. It is a sobering experience to read on the Internet MEMRI's vast store of translations from many media, and to note how much of what is written is conspiratorial, vicious, and unyieldingly hateful. Memory and Carmen have been accused of selecting the worst of a diverse media, however, the sheer range of what is available weakens that criticism, as does support for the initiative by Arab liberals. The Iraqi exile Kanan Makia, for example, wrote in the spring 2002 issue of Dissent that Arab intellectuals have allowed a mixture of victimhood and revenge to take hold of popular culture, with few if any dissenting voices. Thomas L. Friedman, a political opinion columnist for The New York Times, has praised memory, and has credited memory with helping to shine a spotlight on hate speech wherever it appears. Friedman has written in The New York Times that what I respect about memory is that it translates not only the ugly stuff but the courageous liberal, reformist Arab commentators as well. In addition, he has cited MEMRI's translations in his op eds. Brit Hume of Fox News said, These people tell you what's going on in pulpits and in the state controlled TV. If you have indoctrination, it's important to know about it. One of MEMRI's strongest supporters is Jay Nordlinger, the managing editor of National Review, who wrote in 2002, Waiting or clicking through MEMRI's materials can be a depressing act, but it is also illusion dispelling, and therefore constructive. This one institute is worth a hundred reality-twisting Middle Eastern studies departments in the U.S. Furthermore, listening to Arabs, reading what they say in their newspapers, hearing what they say on television, is a way of taking them seriously, a way of not condescending to them, of admitting that they have useful things to tell us, one way or the other. Years ago, Solzhenitsyn exhorted, Live not by lies. We might say, in these new circumstances, Live not by ignorance about lies, either. Anyone still has the right to avert his eyes, of course. But no one can say that that is not a choice. Nordlinger also wrote, 
It seemed imperative to learn more about the Arabs to learn, for example, what they were saying to one another, in their media, in their schools, and in their mosques. The Arab world had always been dark this way, it needed to come into the light. And this is where www.memory.org proved invaluable, as everyone has said. In fact, invaluable was written so often before MEMRI's name that one could have been forgiven for thinking the word was part of the name. Memory served as an antidote to darkness, as a way not to be ignorant. According to Nordlinger, one of MEMRI's early notable successes was its exposure of Muhammad al ghamiya al ghamiya had served as head of the Islamic Cultural Center of New York and as Al-Azhar University's representative to the United States and frequently participated in interreligious services. However, upon returning to Egypt in October 2001, al ghamiya gave an interview to an Islamic website in which he stated, among other things, that Israel was responsible for 9-11 and that, if it became known to the American people, they would have done to the Jews what Hitler did, and that, the Jews are riding on the back of the world powers. MEMRI's translation of al ghamiyas interview was later cited by the New York Times, which hired two independent translators to confirm the memory translation. Nordlinger wrote that MEMRI's work has "...never been found to be anything but honest, accurate, and meticulous," and that because of MEMRI's work, "...the Sheikh was exposed." Moreover, the Anne Frank Foundation lists memory along the NISCOR project as Websites with reliable information about Holocaust denial and Holocaust deniers. Topic. See also. Hasbara. Media coverage of the Arab-Israeli conflict. Palestinian Media Watch. Equals equals notes. <laughs>